Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to part two of your autobiography, Your Rahu Ketu Axis. Now, if you missed part one, I'm going to link it above. And in that episode, we looked at the Rahu Ketu Axis of members of the royal family. And we're going to continue that discussion in this episode today. So last time there were a couple of charts that I think I flipped through, but I didn't get to talk about. I think it was Princess Diana, King Charles and Kate Middleton. I had their charts in this PDF. I just never got to uh, talk about those charts. So we are going to take a look at those charts. I've got some handwritten notes here. You can see that I haven't prepared too much for this episode because I've been so busy with readings, guys. Thank you so much for booking me. I've been super busy doing readings for you guys. I'm fully booked the next two weeks as well. Uh, and then I will be doing the monthly, then I will be changing location, and then it will be business as usual. So those of you who have been missing pick a card, please know that I haven't forgotten you and I miss you, you know, and we will be back to that. Um, say for example, mid-March, I think onwards, I should be able to uh, get that going again. So hang in there with me, guys. It, I, I, I thought I better just upload a video this week because it's been a while since I've uploaded one and I don't want to drop off the YouTube algorithm or however that works. So I thought I'd better just pipe up, say hello and put something together here today. But why don't we take a look at the charts of the royal family? We'll start with Prince Harry. There, there were a couple of things I didn't get to say about him. Uh, one of those was, I'll just make sure I'm recording, I've got my Apple Pencil magic wand here. Um, what are we going to do here? So Prince Harry, Ketu and Mars in Scorpio. Let's chat about this. This is important. I've been doing readings for you guys and it's so fascinating because two of you out there over the last couple of weeks, both of you have got Ketu Mars in Scorpio. Now, I think one of you had it in your fifth house, one of you had it in your fourth, right? And one of the features of this placement is that, so we're looking at Ketu energy. What is Ketu energy? Ketu energy can feature separation, okay? It can feature the energy of separation. It can feature the energy of suppression as well, okay? So this is really interesting. Now, when we're looking at separation, for example, I've seen charts of people who, like Ketu Moon is conjunct, and either the person, I've seen this in both instances, I've seen the person or the person's child goes to boarding school. I saw one guy where the mother, I think, um, he was separated from his mother for a time. Mother was in hospital for a time. So I've seen a couple of instances of that with Ketu Moon, that people are actually having a time of separation from, you know, whatever Ketu is conjunct, if Ketu, if Ketu is indeed conjunct something. Another example of that is Ketu conjunct Venus. You might be apart from your spouse for a time. You know, you might be married, you might be very much in love, but for whatever reason, you have to be in separate places, that kind of thing. So when we've got a Ketu Mars conjunct, as we do here in the 12th house, Mars, and it's really interesting. So we've got Lord of the house here. So this is very significant. In your life, you will have to revisit Scorpio type matters and here we've got Ketu, a separation energy. So there's a separation from Mars things. And what is Mars? Well, I'm going to read Mars in this instance as being aggression. So Prince Harry, across his lifetime, has been separated from his own sense of aggression. And it's kind of like he has had to switch that off in order to survive. Okay, um, you know, he has gone through trauma, he, he, you know, he's, he's, he's gone through enormous pain and difficulties and, and we know the life story here. It's, it's really tragic. So in order to survive, one of the things he would have done, and we can see that from this chart, is that he would have switched off his sense of aggression. And now that he is healing and he is recovering, it's like his emotions are switching back on and as part of that healing journey, and especially if you're going up through the consciousness scale and you're coming out of the really dark emotions, as you go up, you're going to encounter anger. And that is what's happening here with, with 
with Prince Harry. He is having to reintegrate Mars energy. He's having to embody a healthy sense of aggression in his life again, right? I'm sure he would have had it when he was very young, but he would have had to switch it off and he would have had to switch it off. Why? And a lot of you will be able to relate to this. A lot of you, even if you don't have this placement, I don't have this placement and yet I do relate to this because you know, in your life you may experience this, but at a milder level. He has to really deal with this in a big way. But, you know, I understand this just from when you're on the spiritual path, you observe every emotion, you look at everything in great detail, you become very sensitive. And so you end up experiencing all the different placements out there. You know, I was thinking about this just the other day. People ask me, or they want to know what sign I am. And it's like, well, I'm not any one particular sign because by the time you study all these placements and by the time you... You know, you're very much on the spiritual path. You are, you, you are all of these, you know, you, you come to know and feel all of these things. So, and some of you out there will know this thing about the need to embody a healthy sense of aggression. Why do we switch it off? The reason we switch it off is because there are people around us. Say, for example, when you're young and your parents are arguing a lot, they're at war, you know, and they're, they're the two gods of your life because they provide you food and shelter. So they are the gods of your world, right? So their emotions actually take priority. And you as the child, you think, well, I'm really angry, but there's nothing you can do about it. There's really nothing you can do about it as a child. So a lot of children will suppress it, they'll switch it off. But then as you grow and you're maturing, you're becoming an adult, you fall in love, different things happen, you're growing, the feelings, they're, they're going to come out. They're, they are going to come out. And so it's really interesting that he is having to reintegrate um, a healthy sense of aggression. Isn't that interesting? And I think really with, with Prince Harry, where it's not going right for him, and where it's, it's, it's not really working out, is that his way of doing this, he's here in the Rahu house, he is Taurus, right? We've got money. And it's like, so he's, he's bringing things out into the open. We've got Rahu here, he's bringing the family secrets out, but he's selling them. Okay, so that, this is just, that, that's not a, not a good idea, right? If he did it for free, that would be interesting. Then we've got a very different character. Then, you know, it's, it's something else. Uh, at play but yeah I, I mean this this whole thing is, is really interesting so with Ketu if you've got Ketu conjunct a particular planet what you can do is you can have a look at when have you had to separate from that thing uh, I don't have Ketu conjunct a planet as such but you know if you've got Ketu conjunct a planet that's this is particularly relevant to you but even you can look at Ketu and who's lording Ketu, and you can see, all right, what did I have to switch off in regards to whoever the Lord of Ketu is? And you'll see that perhaps, you know, there's something that you've had to separate from, or you've had to suppress as well, you know, and, and a part of your life will be um, possibly reintegrating that thing, whatever that is. So that's definitely a way of reading uh, Ketu energy, right? So let's take a look at the other family members. I'm going to have a look at the time. Oh, we're moving along in, in time here. The other thing that I wanted to point out as well is so now we can see the Rahu Ketu axis here. It's, it's 6 and 12, right? So we can see that. Oh, maybe I should draw that on again. Let's see. Here we go. Whoops. Yeah. Here we go. And this is important that I actually do draw this one on because we're going to take a look at the other family members. Now we're going to scoot past uh, Meghan Markle. Do you know, I actually Google searched about her time. I had a look into this whole thing. Look at that, 1981. Is that correct? No, I actually think that this, this when I look at this chart, I do see her. This matches. But yeah, I have been reading some articles now. I don't think that's her time at all. And people are saying that um, she's actually quite a bit older. So yeah, I read all those articles. I thought, oh no, I've done a whole episode where I talked about this chart. But I, I do see her in here. Like this, 
this works. I think I tried going back because they say that she's 44 or something. I don't know. I, I tried going back in the years, but I, I couldn't see her in the charts that I was dabbling with. So I don't know. But let's take a look at the family members here. We want to have a look at their Rahu Keto axis just quickly and just see something that's just so basic and so obvious. All right, so this is really simple. Now you saw with um, Prince Harry just now, you saw that his Rahu Keto axis was here and it was here, okay? You saw that. Now let's take a look at the family, all right? So we've got Prince William here, okay? And we can see that he's got Rahu Keto axis in Kendra position, all right? So we can see that there, big Kendra houses. Look at that, he's there. We'll take a look at Princess Diana. She is also Kendra, right? And, oh, I didn't want it to do that. Okay, hang on, let's get better at this. Sorry, everyone, still new to this. It's quite fun though. Oh no, it's doing it again. Oh. There we go. Takes a while, but there we go. Kendra position, right? So, and the, the other thing that we've got here is that we've got, we've got, oh, let's draw them all first. So we've got Princess Diana. She's got Kendra Rahu Keto axis as well. Let's have a look at King Charles. Okay, same thing, right? Same thing as Princess Diana. Oh, it's done it again. Same thing as Princess Diana, right? That worked. I'm gonna to have to edit this a little bit. Some of these aren't working. All right, so we can see that there. Let's have a look at Kate Middleton. Same path. Isn't this just absolutely incredible? So this is really significant. Oh, it did it again. There we go. <laughs> right. So this is really, really significant. Because have a look at this. Kate Middleton. We've got Kate in the fourth. King Charles. I mean, she's just so similar. Look at that. They're both born on an eclipse, right? How incredible. So King Charles, Kate in the fourth. Princess Diana, Kate in the fourth. And William is Ketu in the first, but that, that is similar because both the first and the fourth are similar and the seventh and the tenth are similar in that the seventh and the tenth are the world stage, they're public. So it's like all these family members, Prince William, King Charles, Princess Diana, Kate Middleton, they all have, they're all walking the same path in life actually. So that is pretty incredible. And then you've got Prince Harry. Look at that, who's the black sheep of the family? I mean, take a look at this. He's walking a very different path. So even just that is, is really huge. And if you take a look at your own family, you'll be able to see, just by looking at Rahu Ketu axis alone, who's quite compatible with who. You will see that. And I relate a little bit to, to Prince Harry because, yeah, my Rahu Ketu axis, I'm, I'm quite a little bit different. Uh, I've got a lot of Jupiter Mercury people that, that are around me, so intellectuals, smart people. And I'm not a smart person. I'm always a doer, you know. I'm always like I've got a pencil and I'm drawing and, you know, so I'm not, I don't relate to that kind of thing. But, yeah, it, it's so interesting that, uh, so I had a lot of Jupiter Mercury people around me. Let's see. So that's because I'm looking at lordships there. But in terms of houses here, let's have a look. So now, so here's a, I mean, I would call him a, a Jupiter Mercury, Prince William here. Princess Diana, she is a Saturn sun. So this is my shorthand. We've got King Charles, a Venus Mars. And we've got Kate Middleton, a Jupiter Mercury. Look at that, she's really compatible with Prince William, very, very compatible. They're a good couple. They really work well together. 
The one thing I wanted to talk about with Princess Diana's chart, now I'll link above, I did do a video on her. I did a master's episode on her, so you can take a look at that. I did that some time ago. But in the last episode, I think I said that her life purpose was different to Prince Harry. And I said that she was meant to fight the establishment. But I said that that's not Prince Harry's purpose. So what am I seeing there? Why am I saying that? Well, I'm saying that because of this house here. For Princess Diana, so we've got Rahu with Mars here. Okay, so that is quite interesting. She is kind of learning aggression. She is learning Mars and learning the battlefield. That's not particularly natural to her. If we look at what was natural to her, we've got here Aquarius, right? And we've got here Moon Ketu conjunct. So what was natural to her was Aquarius being a humanitarian and Moon Ketu conjunct being a mother. Moon in the fourth house, right? She was a natural mother. You know, when she'd hold little babies, they'll all just melt in her arms and be so happy. They won't want to be anywhere else, right? She, she had that. It was just so natural to her. And what she had to learn was she had to learn public speaking, right? She had to learn how to be on the world stage. She had to learn, so we've got Rahu Mars here. She had to learn how to be a leader, how to fight even. And who was she fighting? She was fighting the establishment. And that's, well, that's really Leo in the 10th house. The 10th house, we can see that Capricorn 10th house is a very establishment sort of a thing. So she, it was her mission and purpose to fight the establishment, to rock the establishment. We can see that here with this Rahu Mars conjunction. When we look at Prince Harry by contrast, uh, I don't see that he has to fight the establishment. What I see here is that he has to... Now, one thing that's really interesting, when I watch the recent interviews uh, of Prince Harry, count the number of times he uses the word family. Just count the number. He's always using the word family, which is so amazing. And that's this. That's this right here. That's Taurus. Look at that. And I think a part of his life purpose is to draw lines in the family. I think he is meant to kind of help modernize and revolutionize the family, draw lines, speak up, say what's okay, what's not okay. I think he's definitely meant to do that. And... It is interesting because this Rahu with Venus as the Lord, this is kind of tapping all of this here, which is kind of, it is, you know, Venus in Virgo here in the 10th house, which is drawing lines, which is, you know, yeah, you, you can't, you have to draw the line. Virgo is, when we look at Virgo in the body, what is Virgo? It's the intestines, right? The intestines are saying, okay, we're going to take this and we're going to extract that. That's waste. This is good. You know, it draws the line. It makes decisions. It, it creates, um, well, yeah, it can create boundary lines and all kinds of things. So I do think that his purpose is to modernize the family that he is in to create his own family to create independent wealth and all of that is kind of tapping oh hang on just making a mess here but all all of that is tapping you know this uh venus and sun and mercury there which is authority but see, what he hasn't done is he hasn't, he's, 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 he's been in a rush, hasn't he? He hasn't, if he had some Saturnian energy, he would be able to do all of this strategically and slowly and in a very clever way. And, you know, um, but, and why has it all been in a rush? It's, so it's really interesting. None of these energies here benefit from any Saturnian aspect. Hang on, I'm going to draw that on again. Hopefully this works better. 
How about that? Oh, no. All right. Well, anyway, let's carry on with the rest of this. So Diana's purpose was to fight the establishment. Yes. And now let's have a look at the time. Yeah, it's running out. Um, King Charles's coronation. Okay, what's going on? Oh, no, let's go to Kate Middleton. She is fascinating. And she look at her. She's just like King Charles. And, you know, people... People don't like King Charles. Some people don't. They, 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 they're like, oh, you know, he just used Diana and threw her under the bus kind of thing. And okay, well, um, yeah, I know. It's, I think I've thought a lot about this and I think his main crime in life was just that he was a weak man. That's, that's the worst thing he's done. I don't think he orchestrated anything or did anything. I think his mum is... Uh, yeah, your mum is interesting and I think she's got a bit of a gangster quality. I haven't got her chart here so I'm not going to talk about that but um, I think mum is interesting but I, I think Charles just was a weak man who was just following orders. He was told okay you have to marry her and you have to make children with her and that's it and then when you've done that we don't care. Like, So I, I think he did that. Now why was he weak? Now the reason he was weak was because very much Sun is conjunct Ketu, so his leadership, the leadership of the noble man, right? That, that's this sun here. So that was conjunct Ketu, so it's kind of like up until the age of, you know, as far as 48. Ketu matures at 48, and it kind of releases its grip 48 onwards, but it's like if you're not on the spiritual path or very consciously aware or any of that, then you'll hold on to a lot of old past and old memories and just keep replicating things. You know, you won't be in present time and you won't start acting differently and all of that. So I think with him, his, um, yeah, so his leadership ability due to Ketu here has been suppressed, right? Uh, he hasn't acted like a leader and he has been a very quiet person all right now who's similar to that look right next door Kate Middleton she's very similar Ketu and Sun are conjunct in the fourth just like King Charles Rahu Moon is conjunct here in the tenth they're very very similar and she has been very quiet too and which, you know, that, that has suited her. That's worked so well for her. Uh, that's been a really good thing that she has been very just, just quiet and um, had a nice, slow journey. And I, I'm sure it, it would have been difficult as well, but we just don't get to hear about that. We don't get to hear her side. The one thing that I wanted to bring up here about Kate Middleton was this Rahu Moon. And was the fact that I think her mother, Carol Middleton, is really, really an incredible lady. And I actually think it's her mother, right, her moon, moon in the 10th, that is really the source of the goodness. Um, her mother was, now we have a look here, look at that mother lording this 11th house here. Her mother was a terrific networker. Okay, so mother was a great networker. She used to network and she, I believe, kind of networked and orchestrated the marriages of both of her daughters. And I think her mother is quite the powerhouse businesswoman as well. And I think she has raised her children impeccably. She has done such an amazing job. And I feel like this royalty thing will keep going because of this moon here, because of the mother, because of Kate's mother. That's kind of what I'm seeing there. Apologies, everyone, the camera cut out at the 24 minute mark, but I think I was just wrapping up anyway. I think I was just talking about how Carol Middleton is uh, the, the, the source of kind of a very good energy that's going to keep this whole monarchy thing going. I think if it's not for Kate Middleton and her entire family, then, um, you know, if, if, if it was someone else and, and someone else who liked to talk to the press or whatever, 
then we could be witnessing, I mean, the whole monarchy could just go down now, you know, but it's because of Kate Middleton and her mother and how hard that whole family has worked. You know, the other thing about Kate Middleton's wonderful mother is that, and look at that kind of, yeah, lauding the, the house of hopes, dreams and wishes here. Um, if we have a look at Prince William, look at that. So that's a Rahu moon in Gemini. And Kate Middleton's got a Rahu moon in Gemini there, yeah. Because there are stories about how um, Prince William would go to the Middleton's house and he and you, you can't find many stories about what goes on in the Middleton's house because they are just airtight. They do not speak. They are the most phenomenal people. They're so quiet, so discreet, all that kind of thing that these people need, right? They need someone who's discreet. But I read somewhere that Prince William would go to their house and he would have his um, head on Carol Middleton's lap and she would you know, mother him and look after him. So it's pretty amazing. Prince William has had time to heal. Um, and look at that. Yeah, so Mercury is in there with Venus. Now that's the same what we've got here too. Yeah, look at that. So incredible, you know. Um, it's incredible how how destiny plays out. And I mean, we can see that in the life of Kate Middleton. I think she was in some kind of high, high school, was it high school or primary school production or something It was videoed. And I think in that video, she was marrying King William or something like that. I'll, I'll see if I can find out some information and I'll put it below if I can find out. But from memory, I, I remember uh, hearing something about that. Before we go, I've got one thing here, King Charles's coronation. So I was having a look at the transit wheel for King Charles and I haven't got that on the iPad so I'll just bring it up some other way. And what I can see here is really fascinating. Uh, King Charles on the day of his coronation, so we've got 6 May 2023, he is experiencing a nodal return. All right, so I'm going to actually just click and find out when does that go exact? So the nodal return goes exact. Okay, we're looking at about Feb 2023, right? And if we go to, now what was it, May 6th, wasn't it? April, May, hold on. And we have a look. One of the things you'll see is that the sixth house now, so one of the ways I'm seeing the coronation is I'm seeing that all of the activity of the coronation is happening around Rahu, okay? And I'll bring this up on the screen so you'll be able to see it. So all the activity is happening around Rahu. And we've got an exalted sun, don't we? Yeah, we do, wow. So we've got an exalted sun, we've got Mercury in retrograde, but here's what's interesting. We've got Jupiter in the house. Okay, and this is the thing that concerns me because uh, this is the sixth Lord from his ascendant. So sixth Lord can represent enemies, right? So we've got some enemies in the house. And what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say that I think King Charles really needs to, uh, yeah, security is a concern. And I don't think it's to do with Harry and Meghan Markle. No, they're just children. But they are kind of interesting because what I feel there is that they've been paid a hundred million dollars, right? To divulge secrets and whatever. So it does kind of feel like there are some really powerful forces out there. And I don't know who, but I'll put a picture on the screen if I can find it. Which is kind of interesting showing that there are powerful people who are kind of above the royals and it feels like something's wanting to cause trouble or take them down or something along those lines and that's why a lot of nonsense and chaos is, is kicking off at the moment. Um, it, it's, it's really interesting I saw a video by John Oliver and I'll link it below and it's a really good video and I like John Oliver I think he's really interesting but and he raises all these really relevant points but for me, that video made me think, this is quite interesting because that has been published on YouTube. 
and it kind of feels like there are some really powerful and rich and wealthy forces <clears throat> that are circling that want to take the monarchy down, which is what I'm seeing. So yeah, and me, I, I, I'm not, I'm neutral about all these things. I'm, I have no side one way or another. I'm just observing and sharing what I see. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't have any, uh, I am very neutral, you know, I am very neutral. But anyway, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for tuning in. And, you know, uh, stay tuned on the channel. I realize that I'm kind of not posting as regularly, but it will become normal again and there will be more content and I, I have all kinds of ideas. I'm jotting them down and I really do want to get back to posting more. So hang in there with me, stay tuned, more to come. And I look forward to seeing you next time.